All right. Have you told me two and a half years ago that there was an option to accelerate the timeline of my recovery with my ACL? I would have been super interested because that was really the worst part for my journey was the injury wasn't that bad. It was the surgery and that first like month. And so today I'm joined by Zach Michael. He's the co-founder of Accelerate ACL. And we're going to be talking about how he's helping people recover faster from the ACL surgery. So welcome to the 12th episode of the Need to Know. And we're going to be talking about, is it possible to accelerate your ACL recovery? So a lot of people in the group are somewhere between like just having surgery to maybe that first few months. And hopefully you guys understand that you should be restoring full range of motion and trying to gain that strength symmetry as fast as possible. What does that look like in your program, Zach? Yeah, um, absolutely. So uh, like you said, those are, are definitely, you know, two of the keys that, that we want people to um, be able to achieve early on in the process um, at Accelerate ACL. So, um, you know, whether or not we get involved with somebody before surgery or after surgery, uh, the first opportunity to start hammering away at that is in the prehab phase. So, um, you know, the more work we can get in, I'd say two to six weeks before surgery starts, um, you know, the, the better in terms of we want our clients as close to 100% or feeling as close to 100% as possible going into surgery. Um, you know, there's a lot of metrics out there for range of motion and strength going into surgery that point to if that preoperative condition is going to be, um, you know, crucial to have in place there for post-operative recovery. So, and not to mention the confidence that it'll be there going into surgery as well. If you feel like you're 100% and you're uh, running around like you're 100% before surgery, um, you know, on the back end of that, you're going to be that much more confident coming out, which also plays a critical role in the recovery process. Um, so, you know, in terms of range of motion after surgery and strength after surgery, um, typically within our process, you know, as soon as um, we, we work within the doctor's guidelines, of course, the, the operating surgeon's guidelines in terms of what range of motion is permissible. Um, but as soon as we get the, the all clear that we can really start getting to um, full flexion type of work, um, we would expect to see our, our range of motion come back in a, a week or two of, of consistent work. So um, we're typically working together with people about, um, you know, four to five times a week. Um, they're doing some work on their own as well in between. And we're really um, working as consistently as possible to bring that range of motion back, you know, right off the bat. When do you um, usually get the clear from like the physical or sorry, the surgeon that you can, I'm just curious how fast people can get their range of motion back with your system. Yeah. Uh, it definitely varies, you know, it's kind of all over the map for surgeons. Um, so that's kind of, um, you know, where we, uh, obviously those are questions that we can flush out with, with clients, you know, before we, we get into the process at all. Um, in terms of making sure that their surgeon knows that they're doing it. Um, also that, um, you know, feeling out what the guidelines are so that we can stay within those parameters. But it's typically all over the map. You know, it can be anywhere from, from, from two weeks, you get the all clear, um, all the way out to six to eight weeks. Okay. Yeah, I think I got it at like two, two and a half, something like that. And then okay. we're good to go. But yeah, like you said, everybody's going to be a little bit different. Probably depends on their specific surgery and the graft type who knows like you know what the surgeons right. are doing right so uh, yeah. it's just good to know because i still know people that are like a year out that haven't gotten full range of motion for whatever reason and so obviously if you can get it as soon as possible and really start working on that that's crucial for the recovery process and yeah. so what makes and you know we talked about this before we got on was basically like what you guys are doing compared to kind of the standard what's been standard i guess approach mm -hmm and using your system, like what is it that makes your system unique? Yeah, so um, I guess there's a couple of things and, and the two things would be um, our, our ability to advocate based on our experience, you know, all over the country working with people. Um, so we're really able to make sure that our, our clients are um, utilizing, you know, know what questions to be asking their, their doctor, physical therapist, um, bring the expertise from everything that we've seen through our experience. Uh, into the process from, you know, the best practices ever all around the country. And then the second piece of that is a technology that we use, um, which is uh, direct current uh, technology that allows us essentially to, to load the muscle um, extremely safely, um, get maximal recruitment and take people through um, pretty intense workouts, um, even early on in the recovery process to make sure that those muscles um, are relearning to work through a full range of motion 
and not going to that atrophy that's um, such a big part of the ACL recovery process. Yeah, I, I was so sad the day after surgery when I looked down and my leg, it was, I mean, it's a traumatizing thing, right? I stayed awake for the surgery, which I think is kind of rare. Um, I don't know that they yeah. allow a lot of people to do that, but my surgeon was comfortable letting me do it. And I mean, I, yeah, they were drilling in my leg. They were like, they cut out a third of my patella. Like there's going to be trauma, right? So it doesn't take much to atrophy the leg. And so Absolutely. as soon as we can get it back, the better. And if I could have got it back, I mean, I had a pretty standard recovery, you know, within three to four months, I started running um, with your system. Have you seen people actually accelerate their ability to get back to even running? Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, of course, again, always staying within the, the guidelines of the, the surgeon, For but, sure. um, as long as they're, you know, on board with the, with, with the progress and typically they're looking at the range of motion, the strength, what activity they've, you know, their, their, uh, mechanics with, um, walking, um, we're going to start kind of pushing them as soon as we can. So, um, you know, we want to start seeing where they're at with activity levels within, um, typically about three to four weeks of starting to work with them. And then seeing, you know, what kind of pain levels are there, what the mechanics look like, and if everything's looking good, we're going to continue on, you know, pushing that process and, and getting their body comfortable with um, the activities that they want to be able to do again uh, early on in the process. That's so cool, man. <clears throat> so the technology you said is like one part of that makes your programming, obviously, and your guys' um, experience and mm -hmm understanding what's happening throughout really the entire world with ACLs, but the technology, like how does that specifically work? I know a lot of people are going to have questions about using it. Like, why does it work? And I've seen some of the videos and advertisements where they're, they're kind of running the device mm -hmm. along, trying to find like weak points in the muscle. Like, how does that yeah. work? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so early on in the process, you know, in the, well, we'll start kind of right after surgery and, and the ways that we're able to implement it uh, early on the process, you know, when, when nobody's been, when clients haven't been cleared for movement, much movement at all, um, they're not ready to get into kind of their full gamut of, of exercises just yet. Um, we're just using the technology basically to bring blood flow to the area. Um, you know, we're going to be putting it right around the areas of the, in, the incision and really prevent that onset of scar tissue to developing. So as long as we can keep some kind of, um, you know, neuromuscular communication going down to that area, bringing blood flow flushing through that area, you know, that's going to help us um, reduce the risk of that scar tissue that can be such a big problem later on in the process. Um, as we move into to stage two, we're going to really focus on um, activating the, the quadriceps. So um, we're actually, with, with the technology we use, we're able to stimulate um, the, the VMO, vas lateralis, rectus femoris, uh, as we go through full range of motion exercises. So what that's going to do, it's going to um, contract that muscle and then we're going to retrain those muscles to be able to work through a full range of motion by doing that. So we'll go through some very basic exercises like um, a seated marching pattern, which is actually um, pretty interesting to watch while we're doing this because, of course, we stimulate the quadriceps in that seated march. Your, your knee is going to want to extend and, and you have to keep, we, we cue our, our clients to keep that heel, um, you know, right under the, the knee, essentially, and not let that knee extend. So you're working on that eccentric capacity of the quadriceps, you're working on hamstring um, strength during that phase, and also, you know, continue to activate those quadricep muscles. Um, as we move on to stage two, um, well, I guess stage two was, was when we're clear for movement, the next phase, I should say. Um, that's where you saw the video with the, that, what we call a search process. Um, so basically what we're able to do with, with the stimulation during this phase is move it around on the body, um, we use a, a little blue sponge about three inches in diameter and we send the stimulation through that. Uh, we move it around on the body and what we're asking with that sponge essentially to the neuromuscular system is uh, neuromuscular system. Are you okay firing this muscle the way that we're asking you to fire it right now? If the answer is yes. And if you watch the video, that's when uh, I believe that was Patrick on the video. Um, you know, he kind of was pretty comfortable on the table as we moved it over certain muscles. That's because the neuromuscular system's okay firing that muscle. As the answer, if the answer is no, because it's trying to guard or protect, which often happens after ACL surgery, um, then that's where the guy, Patrick in the video, kind of wants to roll off the table because basically we're firing that muscle. The neuromuscular system saying, nope, I don't want to be firing that muscle. Get that thing off of me. So 
um, that's kind of an indication for us, you know, after we've gotten that quadricep working again, now we can go back one level further, um, almost with some root cause finding or, or really spot where any of those bi biomechanical patterns may be getting thrown off by other neuromuscular deficiencies outside the quadriceps um, that will allow us to um, start working on getting those corrected as well. So that's the, that, the search process that, that you saw in that video. That's pretty cool. I haven't seen anything like that. So definitely sparked my interest. I was like, yeah, it's pretty neat. <clears throat> well, well, is there anything else that you'd like to share with people and maybe like how they can get a hold of you or, you know, find out more information about, I think you guys have like a trial going on where people can see if there's somebody that qualifies for your yep. program. Yep, absolutely. So we have about a 30 second uh, form online. Um, see if you can qualify for a, a two day trial. Basically what we'll do is send the technology out to you. Um, you'll work with us over a course of a couple of days to, to really learn the ins and outs of how to use it. Um, you know, figure out if it is something that can, can give you some benefit. And then from there, we can talk about customizing a plan you know, to your needs um, that, that really helps you get the most out of it for whatever duration of time you're looking to use it. Awesome. Anything else that you'd like to let people know or? I have a question for you. I, you oh. still, with, with having, being awake during that surgery, I'm still oh, thinking yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever dream about that or do you have oh, uh, yeah. like? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So before we were talking before uh, we went live and I told him that I was you know, awake for the surgery and it was a very unique uh, thing. So right before the surgery, the anesthesiologist came in and she was like, you know, you have two options. You can either go under or we can keep you awake. And I was like, really? That's weird. And I like, I dissected cadavers or like I was in the lab in college, like around all that stuff. I'm like, I don't think it's going to bug me at all. So yeah, let's stay awake. I want to see and they gave me a little bit of sedative and I remember everything for the first like half and I'm like looking around and I don't feel anything, but I look over and I could see like a screen where my knee was open, like, cause they open the front part of your knee to take out the patella, right. Or the middle third. And I was like, that's kind of weird. And, uh, she was like, do you want some more sedative? I was like, yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. And I look over again and I could see him actually doing the graph. He was like, he had it on like a spool and then he like saw me look over and like close the curtain. <laughs> and, uh, and then don't I don't remember anything. <laughs> What's that? Don't look behind the curtain. <laughs> yeah, don't look behind the curtain. Uh, he did a wonderful job, but uh, it was funny because after that, she, I think she gave me more sedative and she was like, yeah, we were trying to talk to you and you just like weren't responding to us. And even though I was awake, <laughs> so yeah. it was, it was fine. Uh, it didn't bother me. And I like it because I've been under before and I don't like coming out of the anesthesia. Like just that groggy feeling like coming in and out. I hate right. it. So it was yeah. nice to be able to stay awake and kind of get moving a little bit. But like I said, it was that first like couple of weeks that was definitely the hardest. And so if I could have, you know, accelerated the process and I did pretty okay with my, uh, before surgery, I had like a month before and I mm -hmm. prepped and just did basic strength training, but it would have been nice to get like experts who understood this to, kind of hold my hand along the way. Cause once I had a therapist, like he did a great job too, you know? So having a good team of people along the whole way is, is super important. So if people are out there who are kind of lost and don't really know where they should be or what they should be doing, like, it sounds like your program has a great way of meeting people where they're at and kind of pushing them along the process so that we can get all these people in the group. Like obviously my goal of the group is I want people to be able to squat that I want to start seeing these videos. Most of the people in the group aren't there. <clears throat> yeah. That's what I want this group to become. Like, I want people to come in and be like, yeah, I had ACL, I had whatever knee issue, but now we're like crushing it in the gym and hopefully coming back stronger. I've came back stronger. Like I deadlift squat more than I ever have. Like it is possible. You just got to have the right plan and you got to be consistent. So. Absolutely. And uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, keeping up with everybody in the group and uh, hopefully, hopefully just helping out with any questions that are, that are out there. Um, you know, I'm happy to, to serve in the group the best I can. Absolutely. Yeah. We appreciate you coming in here today. And if anybody has questions, please comment below or just reach out to one of us. And we're, you know, always happy to give you more information to, to help you along the way in your journey. So Zach, thanks for joining us today. And uh, hope, yeah, I hope you're all having a good week and I will catch you all in the comment section.